Hi, everyone. Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe added a new feature to the beta version of Photoshop. Now, I think this is a great new feature, but over the past couple days, I've been watching videos from other creators who are demoing this new feature. And in my opinion, they're most often painting this new feature in an unrealistic, favorable light. Now, I'll talk about that more in a moment. In this video, I hope to give you a more balanced review of this new feature, and I hope to show you what you can and cannot do with it. Now, I did mention that this is a new feature in the beta version of Photoshop. If you are a Creative Cloud subscriber, you are eligible to download the beta version of Photoshop. If you don't know how to do that, I'll show you at the end of the video. Now, as you can see, I have the beta version of Photoshop open, and I have this simple color image. It's just a color wheel with three colors. Whenever you have a color image opened up into Photoshop and you're clicked on that layer, they call that a pixel layer, on the contextual taskbar will be, be this button, Adjust Colors. Let me move it over here so you can better see it. Now, by the way, if you don't see the contextual taskbar like you have it hidden to make it appear, just right-click outside of the image and go click on Show Contextual Taskbar and it will appear. Now, again, whenever you have a color image open and you're clicked on that pixel layer of the color image, we'll have this adjust colors button. Click on that button and you'll get this little color palette. And this little color palette will have the six most prominent colors in the image plus another swatch that's all colors. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, there's only three colors in this image. If you want to count the white background, that's four. Well, I think it gives you six no matter what. So it's getting like colors that are like right at the transition, say between yellow and red. And it's showing a swatch for that. And then you have, of course, as I mentioned, a swatch for all of the colors. Now, what you can do is if you want to adjust a specific color, click on that color swatch. So let's say I want to adjust the red in this image. Click on the red swatch. This little thing will appear with three sliders, hue, saturation, and lightness. So I could change the actual color by moving the hue slider. I could change the saturation with the saturation slider. And I could train, change the lightness with the lightness slider. So I could do that with all the colors. I'll jump over to yellow and I could change the U of the yellow, the saturation of the yellow, and the lightness of the yellow. And then I could jump over to blue and do the same exact thing and change this all I want. Now, that's pretty cool. Now, I, I got to tell you though, you could do similar things with the current version of Photoshop. Photoshop 2025. Let me jump over to that. I have that open over here. So here's the current version of Photoshop with the same exact image. To adjust colors, I would open up the Hue Saturation Adjustment layer. Then I would go to this drop down right here where it says Master, and I would say go to Reds. And here I could change the U. I could change the saturation. I could change the lightness. And I could do that for these three colors that are in this color wheel. I could go to blues and change that as I, as I did the other one. And then I could go to yellows and do the same exact thing. So you could do it here. And you're probably thinking, well, what, you know, what's the big deal? Well, it is better, though. Let me just try to show you how this is better. We'll go back to the beta version of Photoshop. And by the way, I should have mentioned this. When you do these adjustments, it will add an, a U saturation adjustment layer. So right here, you can see it's right here. So it is an adjustment with the U saturation adjustment layer. And if I say get rid of this U adjustment saturation layer by throwing it in the garbage, instead of clicking on the adjust colors button that is in the contextual taskbar, I could just click on the U saturation adjustment layer. And you can see how this is different. It has these color swatches here. And I could go to this drop down and I could change it to prominent colors. These are the exact same color swatches that I would get if I clicked on the adjust colors button in the contextual taskbar. So, same thing, I could do the exact same adjustment here. Right? So, I could just change colors as I see fit. I'm not going to do them all, but you get the idea. You could do it here or you could do it with the contextual taskbar. It doesn't matter. But I did mention that this whole operation works better in the beta version of Photoshop. Let me show you. Let me get this over here. Let's go to this image here of this uh, red-haired woman, green background. Let's 
change the color of the background. So I'll go to adjust colors, right? And I'll click on the swatch that is related to the background color. And I'm going to change the color of the background. You see, it's working pretty good. You know, right. So it's like a little bit around her hair isn't as good, but I've been able to change this color of this background pretty well with this. Now, we'll go to the current version of Photoshop, Photoshop 2025. I'll go to the exact image. I'll get a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I will then go to the drop down and I will pick greens. And now watch when I change the color of the background. See, it doesn't work as well. It worked great on the color wheel because those were saturated absolute colors, but it's not working as well here. Now I'll reset this by clicking right here. I could improve this slightly. You click on this little hand and with the little hand, I get an eyedropper and I click on the background and it will automatically pick the color of the background. It's saying science, but then I could come in and do it. And you can see it's better here, but it's not as good as this new feature in the beta version of Photoshop. So you can see now I'm getting a spinning wheel there for some reason. There, we got it. So luckily it didn't like totally crash, but you can see how that isn't as good. Definitely not as good as the beta version of Photoshop when I clicked. And you'll also notice that when you do an adjustment on a color, the little swatch changes here. You have the original color kind of in the top left-hand corner of the swatch and your adjusted color in the lower right-hand corner of the swatch. So if I change this, you can see how the swatch changes as well. So you can see it works better here. Now, I mentioned at the top, and I gave a, a dig, which I didn't really mean it to be a dig, to other creators who kind of, in my opinion, have been painting this new feature in a favorable light. And I've been guilty of this as well. So I have been doing this in the past as well. And the reason why I think I do it is because subconsciously, I think that when I show you a new feature, if I show you it working, if it's working flawlessly, I'm thinking you'll think better of my video, which means you'll think better of me. And then when I mention that, you know, go to the description below this video, you go to my website, you could buy my courses and you could do stuff that you'll then click and you'll buy my Photoshop course, my Lightroom course or something like that. And also, as far as I'm concerned, and many of those people as well, we're Adobe affiliates. We'll also have a link in our description below the video that will take you to Adobe. And if you become a Creative Cloud subscriber, we get a commission on that sale. So. In the past, for me, I'll speak for myself, I would maybe go through a number of images till I found an image where the thing I'm demoing works almost flawlessly, if not flawlessly. And I'm thinking, you're going to think I'm great, and you're going to think my courses are great, and you're going to click through and buy Adobe products, and I'll make a commission and all that stuff, right? So I've been trying not to do that anymore is what I'm getting at. I'll speak for myself. So that I hope can give you a more realistic view of what you can and cannot do. Now, as far as this new feature is concerned, let me throw this adjustment layer in the garbage. All right, we're going to, well, I want to delete the whole thing actually. And what I'm going to show you is where it would fail. We're going to stay with the same image. I'm going to adjust colors. I want to change the color of her hair. All right, so I'll click on the swatch related to her hair. Now watch. See how it's adjusting her skin tone as well. That's where you're going to have a problem is when you have colors that are really close to each other, it's not refined enough yet where it could pick the exact color you're targeting. Now you do have, let me reset this by double clicking on that slider. You do have this little eyedropper here. Uh, I could click on this eyedropper and say sample her hair and it will give me a swatch with that hair and I could do it, but you could see it's still affecting her skin tone as well. Now there are workarounds and I'm just going to show you some. Let's go to another image. I have this image here of these sheds. You can see they're very colorful. Um, and let's say I want to adjust colors. All right. And I want to do this shed right here. So I'm going to get the eyedropper so I can get a more precise color adjustment and click right on it. All right. So we have that swatch. Now watch when I change the hue slider. You'll notice that it's changing the grass and it's changing the uh, shed that is second from the end right here. Okay, so it is affecting a lot that I don't want it to affect. But let's just say that I want the shed to be that color. 
what can you do? Well, I mentioned that when you use this new feature, it's really an adjustment layer, a new U saturation adjustment feature. So we have this U saturation adjustment layer. What you can do is make your adjustment, click on the little mask that comes with the adjustment. We need to paint in plaque where we don't want the adjustment to affect. So get a brush by tapping the B key on your keyboard. Make sure you're painting in black. If black isn't the front swatch, click this little arrow to switch it, or you could tap the X key on your keyboard to flop it around. And I'm going to get a bigger brush, and I could come back in and paint in black on the mask. Make sure you're clicked on the mask. And then you could come in and remove the adjustment from where you don't want it. Oops, didn't want it adjusted there. It kind of screwed up. See, I should get a smaller brush. It could be more refined, but I'm just trying to give you a quick, quick overview of how to fix this with the mask. So it is great that it is an actual adjustment layer, and you could come in and use the layer to make sure that it's being applied only where you want it to apply, and it's not going anywhere else. Now, if I want to readjust the color after I did the actual mask, I could double click right on the adjustment layer icon here and I could go back to that U slider and I could flip it around and change it as needed. I'm not sure why we're getting these bounding boxes like a crop. I think that's a bug. We are in the beta version, so you can expect it to act a little wonky. But you can see now because we have the mask, it's only affecting what I want it to affect. Now, this was relatively simple to mask uh, because I just had the grass down here. There was nothing really close to each other. The other shed that was being affected was pretty far away from this shed. What if you have something like this? And we have a model, and she's in front of this colorful background, and I want to change the color of the background. Well, I go to Adjust Colors, and I pick the color of the background, and I go to Hue. You can see it's affecting her, too. Well, what can we do? Well... It is an adjustment layer, so we have this mask. But if I click on the mask and get a brush, it's really difficult to brush like the model out so that only the background is being affected. So here's what you could do. Click on the actual background layer, the layer that has the model on it. Then get any selection tool. It doesn't matter which one. Just tap the W key on your keyboard. When you do, you'll get one of these three selection tools. It doesn't matter which one. When you have the selection tool active at the top for the tool settings, you'll have select subject. It'll also be this little downward caret. Click on that and make sure you're on cloud for detailed results and click select subject. It will find the subject of the image, which is, of course, the model. And because it is using the cloud, it will send the image up to Adobe servers to get your selection. Now, you could just end it here and build a mask and stuff, but... Um, we should refine it so that it looks best. To do that, then click on Select and Mask. I like to use most often on black view. So click on the on black view and you'll get this. You notice her hair isn't very well selected. So click on Refine Hair and you'll see it will improve a little bit. And what will make this improve even more is if you go down here to Output Settings and click on Decontaminate Colors. And you'll notice that it improved even more. Here, I'll turn that. There's before and there's after. So her hair looks even better. Now you want to output it to a new layer with a layer mask. And we're going to click OK. And you're going to see that we're going to have a discolored model with a clipped out background. It's not what we want, obviously. Don't worry. What we're going to do is we're going to turn back on that background layer. Then we're going to turn off this new layer that we just created. But with it off, we're going to take the mask and we're going to drag it up to the mask with the adjustment layer. So we're replacing the adjustment layer blank mask with this mask we just built. Let go, it's gonna ask you if you wanna replace it. Click yes, but it's gonna be backwards, watch. It's backwards. All you need to do is invert it. To invert it, click on the mask itself and hit Command or Control I for invert. Now we've inverted the mask and it's the way we want it. If I want to readjust that background, what I could do then is just click on this adjustment layer icon right here, and I could go back to my hue slider. Now you'll notice it's only affecting the background. So it does work really well. And this would work, you really couldn't do this with the current version of Photoshop, at least not as effectively. Like this. 
So you can see it works pretty well. So it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. Um, if you want to, if I go back to this one here, and let's say I get rid of this. Again, if you want to just not use the contextual taskbar, not don't want to click adjust colors, just grab a U saturation adjustment layer, go to this drop down, click prominent colors, you'll get the colors here. And then you could click on the color you want to adjust, say her top, and you could change the color of her top. Pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. It's just not as flawless as some of us are making it appear. You could see even her top's a little not perfect, um, but you could come in and try to pick uh, colors that you think might affect the top. I don't know that one. But anyway, you get the idea, I think, of what you can do. It's, I think it's a pretty cool, pretty cool new, uh, new feature in the beta version of Photoshop. Now, I mentioned um, that looks horrible. I should throw that out. Uh, if you want to download the beta version of Photoshop and you do not know how, all you need to do is open up your Creative Cloud app. Then you'll be here when you open it up at the home position. Click on apps and go to the beta tab. And then right here, Photoshop beta, uh, there'll be an install button. Like I have an install button for Premiere Pro beta. So if you do that, you'll have the install button. Just click install. Now you can run the beta version of Photoshop at the same time as the regular version of Photoshop. So you could, they could cohabitate on your computer as I am doing. Uh, so you could have them both and you have the best of both worlds. So that is, again, a more realistic view of what you can and cannot do with adjust colors. Now, again, it is in the beta version of Photoshop. I'm sure it's going to be improved. And I didn't mean to bash any creator because I used to do it myself. It's just something that I kind of um, thought about. And I thought that I'm better served in the long term to not do that anymore and just give you a really realistic uh, demonstration of what you can and can't do with something I'm demoing and hope that you'll appreciate that. And then when you go in the description below my video and you click on the links to my stuff I sell or the Adobe link that you'll uh, consider doing that at least. So that's it. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.